Hey, how's it going everybody? Now this is gonna be a feast. This is 10 facts about the female body very few people know about. Now honestly, the only, the only reason I was interested in this one is because I saw that it had almost 10 million views. But it's done by a channel that um, we have done a few videos from so far. It's called uh, Brightside with almost 40 million subscribers. And they make some really, really uh, good videos. I'm not gonna lie. Um, just, just, I like the way they, how they structure videos. That's all I can say. And it's interesting because they always, as you can see here, they always live stream some sort of riddles that they do. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit clickbaity here and there, but overall it's some good stuff. So let's see if we can learn something. Let's give it a thumbs up. Let's go. Ten facts about the female body very oh few people know Let's about. Go. The human body is truly fascinating. Even though we've come to understand a lot about it, there's still so much more to learn. This is especially true about the female body. It's a mystery wrapped in an enigma. If you're ready to find out more about women and their physiology, then let's get started. But before we jump in, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that little notification yep. bell so that you won't miss any of our new videos. Yeah, definitely. If you're interested, like I said, they make some great videos. God, that video was done a long time ago. See, 1.4 million. Yeah, I got 40 million by now. now. Let's go. Number 10. Their necks are more flexible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you ever noticed how women and men turn when they're called? Pay attention next time, and you'll see that men turn their whole bodies while women just turn their heads. The reason for this difference lies in the what? much more elastic muscle structure in the female body. I mean, it makes sense. However, this does mean that ladies should be extra careful while turning their heads. According to a study from Loyola University Medical Center, women are 1.38 times more likely than men to report neck pain due to cervical degenerative disc disease. Yeah. This condition is a common cause for neck pain, stiffness, burning, or numbness in surrounding tissue. If this sounds familiar to you, definitely have your doctor check it. Oh, actually, have you seen this when they when they stretch their necks? Horrible. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's part of the culture, but honestly, it's it's not a good thing. God damn, I've seen some uh, documentaries about this, and um, I mean, if you keep it in place like that the entire time, you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose um, neck neck muscle whatsoever. It's the same if you you know if, if if you don't walk for a long time, right? Even if you're able to walk, you're you're gonna have a more a, a tougher time readjusting, right? And a t and a tough time just uh, doing it in general. So imagine imagine you're not because she can't even turn her neck. Imagine you can't even. How do you sleep? Sleep with that. Get out immediately. <laughs> Number nine. Women have sensitive hearing even while sleeping. Another aspect of being a woman is having way more sensitive hearing, and that's thanks to the evolutionary process. From a biological point of view, a woman's ear is hypersensitive to noises during sleep so that mom can always hear and respond to her crying baby, if it's in a different room, of course. Anybody, man or woman, would be awakened by a baby screaming right next to them. This sensitivity is mostly to high-pitched noises, so it's not like most women are woken up by every single noise in the night, like a squirrel running up a nearby tree or a leaf falling on the ground. Besides, Let me try to pronounce it as a German. It's one of the most difficult words. Squirrel. Squirrel. It's funny, because I bet everyone who's laughing about that, oh, squirrel, can't even pronounce the German one. Eichhörnchen. <laughs> Besides having superpower hearing at night, researchers at Australia's Sleep GP Clinic have confirmed that women are also more prone to have sleep disorders that are often associated with daytime sleepiness. This, in turn, is linked to chronic fatigue, depression, and memory problems. Well, you win some, you lose some. Number 8. One of their breasts is bigger. Okay, the first two, I mean, the first one makes sense. Two, okay, the first one makes sense. Uh, okay. Second one, sure. This one I know. Then the other. This size difference can either be practically invisible or pretty noticeable. But either way, there's really nothing to worry about. Nobody has absolutely symmetrical breasts, and there are a lot of different reasons for that. 
For one, it could be a difference in the volume of breast tissue, the size or shape of the breast pocket, or even the skin. Kind of like one is bigger, like like larger, right? One goes goes more down than the other. One of the nipple, for example, is bigger than the other. I mean, there's a lot of changes. Skin's elasticity on each breast. Whatever the case, it's completely natural and normal. Hell yeah. They're all beautiful no matter what their shape or size, <laughs> don't you think? Number seven, Always. women are more rational than men. Despite common opinion that women are more emotional and men are more rational, science says otherwise. Psychologist Stuart Ritchie and his team of researchers found that the human brain has a much thicker cerebral cortex than the male brain does. This is the region of the brain associated with higher scores on a variety of cognitive and general intelligence tests. Meanwhile, men have been found to have higher brain volumes, which plays a big role in emotions. So take that, gender stereotypes. Number wow, he, he just really showed me. What is it? Women are more prone to having cellulite and that isn't a bad thing. By the way, it's it's like, okay, he gives his opinion in here. Come on, dude. Like, I thought this was some, some objective stuff here. Six, women are more prone to having cellulite, and that isn't a bad thing. By modern societal standards of beauty, cellulite is perceived as something that one should be ashamed of. And the fact that 98% of people with cellulite are ladies versus only 2% who are men just puts even more pressure on women to look a certain way. But let's start off by getting a couple of things straight. Cellulite isn't a medical term, and it's not at all a sign of obesity or weight problems. Instead, no, never. Seriously, I, I knew that. Instead, it's just a sign of a mature female body. According to statistics, only one in 40 women doesn't have this kind of accumulation of fat on their upper thighs and buttocks. Yet, we still keep here. But I mean, what is it, what is it about... Um... If you say that that's just you know a, 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 a mature body or an adult body, I mean, but how can I mean people? Why does doing exercise then help? I may be a dumb question. I don't know, but hearing about the wrong fat and the built-up toxins that our bodies can't cope with. In fact, fat tissue plays an important role in the production of hormones, including estrogens. These hormones promote the development and maintenance of female characteristics in the human body, so you can imagine how important they are. Plus, the societal view of cellulite as some kind of unsightly problem isn't even 50 years old. So should we really stress out about it when the stunning Marilyn Monroe didn't? Yeah, I don't think so either. Number five, they get drunk faster than men. You okay, sure, from experience, yes, that's very true. But is it because genetically, I mean, is, is it because of genetics? I don't know. You surely notice that most women have a lower tolerance to alcohol than their male compadres. Well, this is basically due to the fact that the female body has less water in its tissues than the male body. Hmm. According to researchers from the University School of Medicine in Trieste, Italy, this difference in water levels means that women get drunk faster because their body are less able to digest the alcohol before it reaches the bloodstream. Less water in the tissues is also connected with the tendency of women to sweat way less than men. This can be a good, good thing, but it's also the reason why most ladies don't tolerate the heat so well. Another I was going to say because if your body is not able to sweat, the whole sweating process is the body trying to cool you down. Another study at Ireland's School of Medicine and Medical Science found that because of the lower water level and, therefore, smaller volume of blood, women also have 12% lower hemoglobin levels than men. Pretty interesting stuff, huh? Number four, they form stronger attachments to people. We already mentioned how studies show that women's brains are built to be more rational. But that doesn't mean that their emotional side is lacking. Women connect with people on a much deeper level than men do. And scientifically speaking, it's because they have higher oxytocin levels. Oxytocin is the so-called love or cuddle hormone, and it's released when you bond with someone socially. It promotes attachment, solidifies relationships, and eases stress. 
It's also responsible for creating mother-child bonds and even for breastfeeding. So if you need some emotional support, call a gal pal. Hmm. Number three, women's bodies keep changing even into their 20s. I heard this. If you think that once puberty's over, your body is done going through major changes. Oh yes, this is a good picture. Have you noticed some people, you don't see them for a couple of years and then all of a sudden, I mean, especially when you're young, then all of a sudden. Then think again. Women's bodies continue to change and grow even into their 20s. That's some good news for you if you've had some crazy irresponsible teen years as far as healthy habits are concerned. It's never too late to improve your lifestyle. As cliche as it might sound, you've got to eat healthy. Include more bananas and almonds in your diet since they're rich in bone-strengthening calcium. That's especially useful for the ladies since women are more prone to bone health issues like osteoporosis later in life. Exercising is also a great way to strengthen your muscles and keep you mobile. But it's not only about the body. The brain changes too. More specifically, your prefrontal cortex keeps developing into your 20s, which means that chances are you'll get better at decision-making during this period. Hmm, interesting, okay. Number two, their brain- So it's not necessarily exclusively about um, experience, it's just with time. Brains are more intricately hardwired. Dr. Regini Verma, a professor at University of Pennsylvania, together with her team of researchers, used special imaging technology to study the neural pathways in the brains of 428 males and 521 females aged 8 to 22. And they came to some interesting conclusions. It turns out that the... Your nice head, dude. By the way, I find it always so fascinating when they say, you know, so many people were tested for this, for X and Y and all that stuff. But have you ever been part of the group that was asked? I've never actually met a person who's, who participated in some kind of experiment like that. And they came to some interesting conclusions. It turns out that the left and right hemispheres in women's brains are more interconnected than those of men. This means that women are faster at socially connecting with people and get used to routine much easier. Sounds like the scientific explanation of why men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Our brains just work differently. Number 1. Blonde hair is more common among Caucasian women than Caucasian men. According to a study published in Nature Genetics, women of European descent are twice as likely to be natural blonde compared to men, while Caucasian men are three times more likely to have black hair than women. The cause of these trends is still unknown, what? but the researchers do have some theories. They think it's probably uh, uh, okay, but th this lady doesn't have is still a natural blonde hair. Come unknown, on. but the researchers do have like she's obviously dyed. You can see her roots, you know, through the dark. Even I have. When I was when I was a kid, I was very very blonde. I had very blonde blue eyes. Now it's, my eyes are slowly but surely turning more into my mother's eyes, which is uh, a little bit grayish actually, rather than blue. Um, and my hair now is definitely dirty blonde, that's for sure. Have or coyote blonde, as I always say. Some theories. They think it's probably due to the fact that blonde genes present at birth are more persistent in females and usually disappear in males as they grow up. In mice studies, the scientists also found pigment genes to be linked with stress and hormones. Again, these are all just educated guesses. As for now, experts are calling this phenomenon an intriguing mystery. Hmm. Speaking of mysteries, we have a little bonus for you. The enigma of female body language. Whether or not it's scientific fact or guesswork based on reoccurring trends, a woman's body language can say a lot about her feelings. For example, if a woman is interested in what her conversation partner is saying, she tends to stand with her shoulders lowered and her hands clasped together. On the contrary, arms crossed over the chest show she'd rather be elsewhere than talking to a certain person. Keeping your hands below chin level and visible is considered attractive and polite in all kinds of situations, including social, business, and romantic. I would I would um, say that that's a general thing. I mean, if someone you know does that, they're generally not very keen on what you're about to say. Once or what you, they they do, they are not looking forward to what you what you, what you about to say. 
Well, our body can definitely reveal more about us than even we know or mean to show. Uh, perfect. Well, let's keep it. Let's uh, end it with this video. Perfect, perfect form right there. Um, definitely a few things. I mean, some of it's just scientific, right? Others you experience yourself. Obviously, you know, with one boob being bigger than the other one, you know, that's that's I would say common knowledge. But by now, by now, uh, but obviously you can appreciate every single size. That's for sure. Guys, if you learn anything and uh, maybe there's other stuff that uh, you know about women that he doesn't know, definitely let me know. If there's anything else you, you would like me to react to, definitely put the name of the video down in the comments and I'll go check it out. Guys, take care and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.